Hello wonderful people! Today we're going to be drawing a watercolor spring squirrel and I will be working in Procreate but you could use any other digital art software that you're comfortable with. And there may or may not be a giveaway in this tutorial as well so make sure you stick around for that. So the first thing we need to do here is make sure we have a paper texture in our file before we get started with anything else. Now there is a bunch of different ways to do that. If you've bought brushes from a creator, whether it's someone else's or my brushes like the Big Brush Bundle, chances are you have some sort of paper texture file that came with those brushes. So if you have one of those, just go ahead and open that up. Otherwise, if you don't have a pre-textured file, don't worry, I do have a paper texture that you can download for free. It is linked in the description below and it comes with instruction on how to add it to your file so that it's a paper texture and not just a straight up image. So feel free to pause the video here, make sure you have a paper texture in your canvas and then we're going to move on to the next step which is going to be starting the illustration with a very rough sketch. Great, so once you have your paper texture in your file, we're going to start with a super rough messy sketch just to map out the basic shapes and figure out the proportion we want to use for a square roll. So for that, go ahead and create a new layer and make sure that new layer is below any texture and effects you have, whether it's a group or a single layer. Then go ahead and rename that new layer to Sketch. Now for the sketch, you can really go with any color of your choice because we're not gonna see it in the final result. I like to just sketch with a neutral gray, so that's what I'm gonna go for. And throughout the video here, you have a few different brush options that you can use depending on if you're working with free procreate brushes, if you're working in a different software, or if you have more fancy, I guess, creator brushes. So yeah, I'm gonna do my best throughout the entire video to give you suggestions based on the different tools you're using. So for example, if you're working with Procreate for the sketch, you could use something like the HB pencil that comes with the sketching pack that comes with the app, if I can find it. There you go, sketching pack, HB pencil. If you're working with a different software, honestly, anything that you're comfortable with, because again, we're not gonna see the sketch in the final result. So a brush that you just like to use in general is going to work perfectly fine here. Otherwise, in the case of this video, I'm personally going to use brushes from my Big Brush Bundle. They are not essential at all, but they can help you get more realistic watercolor results and also save some time. So if you wanna check them out, they will be linked in the description below and there's always a special promo code, but again, they're not essential at all. I'm going to give you tips on creating that watercolor effect, even if you're working with just regular brushes. That being said, if you do have my Big Brush Bundle, we're going to pick from the watercolor pack that comes with it, the ultimate watercolor pack, the coloring pencil. And so here we're really just going to start with very basic shapes, so mostly circles and ovals. And the first one I'm going to draw is a big circle for the body. So you can really just go ahead and quickly sketch a big circle. It's okay if it's messy, honestly, it doesn't matter. We just wanna figure out, again, like I mentioned, the main proportions. Now, once you have that big circle for the body, we're going to draw another circle for the head. And the head, we want it to be roughly like half the height of that body circle. So you can quickly measure that with your hand or your fingers. Place it kind of here on the top right and then use that as a visual guide to help you draw the head circle. Now once we have that head circle, we're going to use that shape to help us place legs, mostly the thigh. So you can just roughly again measure that height and then this time put it at the back of the body circle and draw more of an oval shape, but that has roughly the same height as the head. And I say, you know, same height, but it's really a question of just using those as rough guides to help you figure out where to place everything, but it doesn't need to be exact in any shape or form. Now from there, it's gonna be pretty easy to draw the feet. It's really just going to be these kind of, I'm not sure how to describe that shape. this kind of a flat or half an oval, I guess. So we're going to do that twice. One right below the thigh. And then another one that is slightly staggered. The arms are going to be super simple. They're just going to be two ovals each. And the first oval, well, for the arm that is on this side of the square roll, we're going to draw it that is almost touching the top of the thigh. So you can use that as your reference, kind of like this. And then the other one is going to be 90 degrees from it, so kind of like that. Then the other arm, we're not going to see all of this top oval, so we're going to start with the bottom one just to make sure it makes sense. Kind of having the hands connected like this. 
And then if you want, you can draw the other oval, but when we refine the body in the next step, when we clean up the sketch a little bit, we're mostly going to hide this arm. Great, so from there we're almost done with the basic structure. Again, we're keeping it super simple, but we are missing some key elements like the tail, the ears, and some guides for the facial features. So we're going to start with the tail because it's super simple. Essentially, you're going to just draw a big blob and it can have any shape of your choice. It could be kind of fluffed over itself in the back, or in my case, I'm just going to have it be kind of this almost fiery, like a flame shape behind a squirrel. Now here I'm gonna be drawing a red squirrel. So it's gonna have very long fluffy ears, but if you were to draw, I don't know, like a black or a gray squirrel, you could just go and draw more normal sized ears. But in my case, again, I'm just gonna draw them super long. And so for now, I'm just going to be drawing these rounded triangles on the back of the head. So literally one that aligns with the back of the head circle and then one that is slightly more in front, just like that. Now let's just refine the head a tiny little bit before we start cleaning this crazy messy sketch. And when I say refine, honestly, we still don't want it to be clean, but we want it to be more of a squirrel head shape than just a circle. And what I mean by that is we're going to start by just flattening the top of the head a little bit. And then we're going to create more of an angle in the front rather than just this curve. So bringing it forward like this a little bit. And then connecting the bottom to create this kind of shape. So a flat line at the top, an angled line in the front, that then creates a curve for the bottom of the head. Now from there we can also add the guides for the eyes. And the eyes, honestly, you can place them roughly in the middle of that new head shape that we have. So you can just draw yourself a quick horizontal line there. And if you want, you can go ahead and just map out the eye now, might as well. So for now, it can just be a big circle, nothing fancy. And maybe we're going to see a little bit of the side of the other eye on this side of the head. So feel free to pause the video here if you need more time to play with these super rough shapes. Again, this is essentially what we want at this stage, just a very basic structure of the squirrel. But honestly, don't spend too much time on it because we're just about to come back on it and clean it up a little bit so that we have a clearer idea of where we're going to put the colors in the next chapter. So to clean up the sketch, all we're going to do is we're going to come in with a different color than what we use for the rough sketch. So in my case, I'm just gonna go with black. And maybe we might want to use a slightly bigger version of our brush here, just to make sure again, that we can distinguish between that rough sketch and the clean sketch very easily. And all we're going to do here is we're going to try and figure out out of all the crazy messy lines we have, which ones we actually want to use. So that really just means zooming over to different shapes. For example, let's say I start with the head and then you're going to go over and say, let's say for the head, the top of the head, I want this line right here. So it's really quite simple. I like to call this step finding your line. It still doesn't need to be clean in any way. You can still have a few messy lines, but you wanna have a better idea overall of what your final illustration is going to look like. So I'm going to stop talking here to let you focus on drawing those cleaner lines, but I'm gonna keep my video going in the background so you can use it as a reference, of course. And when you do have your cleaner sketch, and I say cleaner because it's still super messy as you can see, 
Before moving on to the color, it's a really good idea to take the time and move stuff around as needed. And that is the beauty of starting with a super messy sketch. It's easy to move stuff around very quickly to make sure that you have a structure you like before you actually spend a lot of time on outlines and colors and things like that. So what I mean, for example, is I feel like the head in my case is a little bit too forward. So I could just easily move it around by using a selection tool making sure it is set to freehand and then drawing a selection around the basic shapes that I want to move, again in this case the head. And then with an arrow tool, super super simple, I can just move that around, move it back so that it's a little bit more where I want it to be. You could also use that technique to resize elements, maybe I could make the head a little bit bigger. Really anything you feel like you're not happy with your basic rough <laughs> crazy messy sketch at this point, it is worth taking the time to play with those elements and see how you could tweak them so that you're more happy with your basic rough sketch. And that's exactly what I encourage you to do here before moving on to the coloring phase. Take all the time you need here, pause the video and really just play with the different shapes until you're super happy with the basic structure. Great, so when you are happy with your basic structure, we're going to start adding the colors. And at this stage, it's pretty much like we're working with a messy coloring book. So the hardest part of the tutorial is over by now, essentially that's what I'm saying. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by lowering the opacity of that crazy sketch so we can still see it and use it as a guide, but so it's not quite as distracting as it would be right now. So the way to do that in Procreate, super easy. You just tap on the little N next to the check mark, and then you lower the opacity slider until you can just barely see the sketch. In my case, I'm going to keep it more opaque so you can see it in the video, but in your case, really lower the opacity as much as you can before the sketch just completely disappears. Then under that, we're going to create a new layer, and we are going to rename that new layer to Colors. Now to make it as easy for you to follow along, if you want, you can go ahead and download my color palette, the one I will be using in this video. It is completely free, of course. It will also be linked in the video description. And actually I went ahead and added the new colors to my Fawn color palette from a few weeks ago. So now it's kind of combined. If you're doing the Fawn video afterwards, this is a new palette, but essentially, yes, <laughs> we're going to be using these colors here. You can follow along with your own colors. I always encourage you to do that. But if you want to do exactly what I will be using, or if you want to do exactly what I will be doing, I should say, we're going to use these colors right here. And we're going to start with a bit of an orange brown, which is this one right here in the color palette. And we're going to just roughly fill in the shapes first using either a round brush with lower opacity or a watercolor brush. So if you're working with Procreate free brush versions, or if you're working with a different software, here I really just encourage you to go with the most basic round brush you have in your software. So in the case of Procreate, I would mean going in the airbrushing pack that comes with the app and picking the hard brush. But not just that, you would also lower the opacity of that brush so that you get some overlaps whenever you overlap the strokes. So the way to lower the opacity of a brush in Procreate is this slider right here, and you want to set it around 40%. It doesn't need to be exact, but the idea is that when you overlap your strokes, you get those kind of darker colors in the middle. If you do have my big brush bundle though, we are going to pick from the watercolor pack the Dark Edges watercolor, which is at the top of the list. And no matter which brush you're using, we're going to start with a small to medium size brush. The exact size doesn't really matter, honestly, as long as you're able to get into the, the crevices and like the small points of your illustration, that's really all you want here. And with that small brush, we're going to go over and we're going to just outline the biggest outline or like just the most outside outline, I should say, of the squirrel so that we can then come back in and fill it in really quickly. Now, this is something you want to take the time to do so that you actually have precise enough lines but it shouldn't take you, I don't know, like it shouldn't take you five minutes. It should be something that you can do in a minute or two. If it takes you longer than that, it might just be because you're being overly precise for this step.
And then once you have these outlines, we're going to come back in with either the same size brush or a little bit bigger brush, depending on what you started with. And we're just going to fill in the inside. But the goal here, or at least the idea, is going to be trying to avoid creating overlaps between or within an element. So you don't want to necessarily lift a pencil when you're filling in a tail. You can lift it between the tail and the body or between you know the arm and the body, that's okay. But essentially you want to avoid creating a bunch of those. The reason for that is we are going to use the overlaps, yes, for sure, that's going to help us create the watercolor effect, but we want to use them intentionally. That being said, you can definitely have some overlaps between the basic color that is inside and then the edges. That's also going to help us create the final watercolor look. So I guess what I'm trying to say here is try not to lift your pencil if you can when filling in the shape. If you do end up lifting it up, it's not the end of the world. You don't have to restart. Don't worry about undoing. We'll blend everything in later, but if you can not lift it, that is ideal. Great. Now, once you do have that first layer over the entire square roll, we're going to come back in and we're going to reinforce some areas. So right now we have something that looks really pale, but the square roll itself, we want it to be much more intense in colors. So we're going to go back over the entire square roll, except for the belly, which in my case, I'm going to have it be a white belly and the front of the head right here and maybe around the eye as well. Once more, if you can avoid lifting your pencil, that is ideal, but if like me, for some reason it just ends up lifting up on its own, don't worry about it, just keep going, it's all good. Great. So now we're going to start actually modeling the 3D feel of the squirrel because we have dark enough colors for the light areas of the squirrel. So we're just going to come back in and start adding some shadows still by just overlapping the strokes. So we're going to start by mapping out a shadow on the bottom section of the tail and we're going to keep that shadow really just on the tail so we don't want to bring it on the leg. So it's going to look a little bit like this. Now we're also going to add a shadow in this kind of nook here between the leg and the arm. So this kind of weird triangle. And we're also going to add one on this foot right here that is in the back. Now if you're using my brushes, one thing you might notice is from one stroke to the other, there is ever so slightly of a change in the color, and that is one of the beauty of working with watercolor brushes, is you have some of that color variation that is going to make it look more natural. So that is totally normal if you're noticing, hey, my different sections are slightly different. That is great, that's what you want. If you're working with normal brushes, don't worry, I'm going to give you tips again on how to do that manually later. That being said though, we're also going to add an extra shadow on the ear right here in the back. Great. Now once you have that, if you feel like your squirrel is dark enough, you could keep it like that, but I'm realizing I kind of want, want it to be a little bit more saturated, so I'm just going to come back in again, same color, same brush, and I'm going to go over all the elements except for the belly and the front of the head. So just making it a little bit more vibrant of a watercolor effect.
great. Now, it's going to look completely crazy for a little while <laughs> where we're painting these blobs, but uh, we're going to blend everything in just a second. We're just going to keep mapping out a few different color sections before we start blending. So just trust the process for now. If you feel like this is never going to come together, I promise it will, but we just, we're going to keep mapping out a few different things first. So the next thing we're going to do is just come in with a slightly different brown, which in the color palette is going to be this one right here. As you can see, it's a little bit more red and it's quite a bit darker as well. So we're just going to use that to accentuate some areas and again, just amplifying that color variation that we would get within the watercolor pigments. I'm personally going to add these darker brown areas on the bottom of the tail, the top of the ears, and some section of the arms and the neck. So I'm going to start here with the top or the bottom of the tail, sorry. Again, same brush, just overlapping the strokes. And I accidentally went ahead and lifted my pencil and created that darker edge, but actually I quite like it, so I'm just going to keep it like that. But you could omit it if you, if you wanted to. I'm also going to add some of that darker brown, as I mentioned, on the leg and the arm. So the leg is mostly going to be here on the front of the thigh, so just one kind of crescent moon shape. And then on the top of the shoulder, another crescent moon shape. I might add a little bit on the back of the neck right here, kind of below the ear. And then I'm going to draw the very top, like the back top section of the ear, probably with a smaller version of that brush though. Again, just a rough size that works for you is what we're going for here, but we want to be able to get in that top kind of pointy area. So feel free to pause the video here to keep mapping out your basic shapes if you need more time. Otherwise, we're going to move on to blending these weird colors that we have going on right now. To do that, once more, you have a few different options of tools to use depending on if you're working with a different software, free procreate brushes, or my big brush bundle. If you're working with free procreate brushes or a different software, you're going to try and find a smudge tool, which is usually a little finger icon. In Procreate, it is this one right here. And you can experiment with different smudge tools depending on the effect you want, but I would recommend just going with a very basic soft brush. So if you're working with Procreate, that would mean going in the airbrushing pack that comes with the app and picking the soft brush at the very top. Now a soft brush essentially is just a round brush that doesn't have any texture to it, but it has some feathering on the edges so that it creates a bit of a gradient. Now this brush you do want to make sure, or the smudge tool I should say, you want to make sure the opacity of it is 100%. I don't know why mine is lowered, but you want to have full on smudging abilities. If you do have my big brush bundle though, we're going to set the paint brush, so not the smudge tool, really the paint brush, to the water drag, which is in the watercolor pack. So at the bottom of the list, not quite the very bottom, but the second to last. And then no matter which tool you were using, we're going to use that tool to blending the overlaps. And in some areas, we're going to use that blending to also create some fur effects. And in some other areas, we're just going to try and blend the pigments. Now, one thing you can experiment here before doing that is hiding your sketch layer. I think I'm actually going to do that because sometimes I feel like the sketch layer comes in and you don't get to see the edges well enough and then you end up having some things that should have been blended and you didn't see them. So I recommend hiding your sketch at this stage, but if you don't feel comfortable with that, obviously you can keep it on, but maybe lowering the opacity. So here we're going to start with the tail because the tail is really bushy. We want to have that strong fur effect. And so what we're going to do or how we're going to do that is we're going to start with a pretty small version of our smudging tool or our watercolor blending tool. You can again just test it out. We want to have a size that could pass for being a strand of fur. So something kind of like this is what I'm going to go for or go with. And you're literally just going to go over the entire tail with short strokes upwards or at least following the shape of the tail, whatever the tail is in your case, to blending all the weird, you know, digital overlaps you have while also creating that kind of fur texture. Now, I like to you, I think that might be a little bit too small. And you can also change the size as you go, of course. There's no, no reason you have to stick with just one size. And for the tail, you can also go over the edges and create some short little fluffs that go outside of the tail. So it doesn't need to be just a solid blob. 
Actually, it's much better if it's not a solid blob. You don't want to overdo it though. You don't want to make it look like your square wall was electrocuted, but just a few little strands like this can definitely help the look. Now, if you are working with my watercolor brushes, depending on the sensitivity of your pencil, you might want to go ahead and tweak a setting so that you don't have some of those kind of weird blobs when you drag. In your case, it might not happen, but if it does happen like it's happening here, it's a very easy fix. You just go ahead and tap on the brush icon here, tap on the water drag brush, and in the stroke path option here, stroke properties, you can just lower the jitter a little bit, probably around, no, something like 30%. And that should help you get rid of some of those weird circles. If you can see now, if I'm dragging, I don't have all these kind of weird blobs. So if that's something you're noticing in your brushes, that depends on a few different factors, mainly the pencil you're using and the version of Procreate and other things like that, like the curve sensitivity that you set in your software. So that's one quick and easy way to just smooth the lines if, um, yeah, if you find like they're a little bit fuzzy like mine's were. Otherwise, once more, I'm going to stop talking here to let you focus on blending the tails, and we might actually do the same thing on the ears, so I'm going to do both of those. Again, I'm going to keep my video going in the background so you can use it as a reference, but I'm going to speed it up a little bit so that you have a better idea of globally what I'm doing instead of every single stroke, what it's going to look like. Now, while you're working on this, let's talk a little bit about the giveaway. So the prize for this giveaway is going to be my big brush bundle. So the brushes that I'm using here in this video. And I'm going to make three winners. And to make it super fair, if you already have my big brush bundle, so if you purchased it in the past or if you're wanting to purchase it now and you end up winning, I will just refund your purchase no matter when it was from. So really, everyone can enter here. And the way to enter the giveaway, it's pretty easy. There's three different things to do. The first thing is make sure you subscribe to this channel because if you're not, sometimes I cannot see your entries as well or as, at least I cannot notify you that you won if you won. So make sure you're subscribed and then go ahead and wait around in the video until you see the secret password, which pops up on the screen. I say secret password so you cannot miss it. And then leave a comment with the secret password both under this video as well as on Instagram. All the details are going to be in the video description as well as, you know, some links for Instagram and things like that. Now, one thing I do want to say out loud in the video as well is that I do not have Telegram or Nicegram. So if you get a reply to your comment here on YouTube that says something like, congratulations, you won, text me at XYZ number, it is not me. Even if they have my profile picture, it's scam, it's bots. So if you get that reply on one of your comments, just don't text them, just ignore the comment. Or even better, you can flag the comment and say, this is spam, that's super helpful because I don't have to go through every single one of them myself. Great. Now, for the rest of the body, we're going to keep the same brush, but we don't want to have as many of these kind of little strokes as we have on the tail and the ears. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to make that brush quite a bit bigger. And instead of going with short strokes, we're going to go with essentially curves, or we're going to follow the shape that we're trying to blend instead of just drawing a bunch of lines within it. So really here, the idea is to blend any weird overlaps that don't look right, so blending in the shadows mostly, but not blending in any edge, like for example the edge of the leg in the belly, because we want that to stay crisp because it's not a shadow, it's really just different elements essentially. Now this step should be significantly quicker than the tail and the ears, because again we don't have too many things to blend in, it's not about creating texture, well it is about creating texture, but it's about creating a watercolor pigment texture rather than fur texture. If you are enjoying this tutorial so far, please consider helping the channel by giving this video a like and subscribing if you haven't already. Now, I know everyone on YouTube is asking me to do that, but believe it or not, it does help us and our channels a lot because it just tells YouTube to take the video and show it to more people. So thanks for helping. Now, if you feel like some elements are a little bit too flat, you can easily add highlights just by picking an eraser set to honestly whatever brush, it doesn't matter at all. And then you can come over and erase some little areas to make them white. So that could mean, for example, here on the belly, maybe I want this section to be a little bit more pale. So I'm just gonna come in and erase a little bit. 
Maybe I want this top of the tail to look less just flat, so I could come in and erase some lights. Maybe I want to see a little bit of the belly between the leg and the arm, so I could just come in and gently erase a tiny triangle. Maybe adding some highlights on the back. Might be a bit too much. <laughs> there we go. Maybe a little bit on top of the ear. Really just finding areas that are too flat and then erasing a little bit so that we can come back in, blend that in a little bit, and have a little bit more of that color variation. Now I'm realizing here, I said I was going to leave some of that cream color around the eye, but I didn't. So I'm just going to reactivate my sketch to see where the eye is, and I'm going to erase around that. From there, you can just go back to your smudge tool or your water drag brush and just blend in these newly erased areas. Don't forget though, I'm forgetting, so don't forget in your case, for the ears and the tail, you want to use a smaller brush and really draw those little fur strands um, instead of just having a uniform blend. Great! So feel free to pause the video here if you need more time to work on blending your weird overlaps. Otherwise we're going to move on to the next chapter which is going to be adding even more color variation, then drawing some outlines and details, and maybe a little bit of a background as well. Awesome! So once you're happy with your blended shapes, at this point it should start looking more like watercolor. We're going to add some more color variation, especially if you were working with free brushes, that is a super important step. There's a few different ways to do that, but one that I really like, it's super easy. Essentially you're going to use a selection tool, like in Procreate, this one right here at the top. And you're going to draw a selection on one part of your color. So in my case I'm going to go with kind of the bottom here, making it kind of wobbly. And then you're going to feather that selection to create a gradient. So in Procreate, the way to do that is using the feathering option right here at the bottom. Now the amount of feathering doesn't really matter. You don't want it to be 100%, you don't want it to be zero. Somewhere in between those, like 30 or 40, would work really well. And then with that selection activated, you're going to apply a color changing filter. The one I like to use here is in the adjustment panel here at the top. Hue, Saturation, and Brightness, the very first option. And then using that color changing filter, no matter what it is, you're just going to play with the different sliders to add some color variation. So in my case here, I'm towards the bottom of the squirrel, so I'm going to use that as an excuse or as a way to add even more shadows. So that means I'm going to lower the brightness, just a little bit. And I might also change the hue a little bit. Let's see, that might be way too much but a little bit maybe towards more of a red than just an orange. So 49%, it's barely any change, but it's still there. So you can repeat that step however many times you want, either focusing on specific areas, or if you are working with free brushes, you could also just repeat the same steps, but instead of having a blob, for example, at the bottom, you could really draw any kind of random squiggle, still feathering it, and then that's going to add some kind of color variation that would look like pigments that are different within the piece. Again, if you're working with my watercolor brushes, that's included in the brush. The brush do behave like that, so you don't have to repeat that step. Now I am going to repeat this step one more time to add some highlights on the top, kind of like I did here for the shadows. So just using the section tool and drawing a selection this time, mostly on the top of the squirrel, but still drawing something that is a little bit squiggly. Feather the selection, probably 
let's go with 36% here. <laughs> and then picking a color changing filter like hue, saturation, and brightness, but this time increasing the brightness and maybe moving the hue towards the other side. So I went with more of a red. So towards the left, the last time I might go towards the right to add a bit more yellow in my orange. Awesome. Now from there, again, we're going to start adding some more details and we're going to draw the facial features. But before we draw the facial features, we might go ahead and draw some outlines just so the shape is not quite as blurry in some areas. It's more crisp and defined. I feel like the tail is pretty good. I'm probably not going to touch this tail more or much, but the hands and the arms, that's a whole other subject. So to crisp up these edges, what I like to do is just creating a new layer above the colors renaming that new layer to either details or outlines, whatever you prefer, and picking the darkest version of the different colors I use. So in this case, it was, well, it's the brown that I used last. I'm just gonna keep that one, but it was this one right here in the color palette. And then I'm going to go back to a pencil brush. So the one that you use for sketching the first step was probably going to be what you wanna use here. If you do have my big brush bundle from the watercolor pack, we're going to pick the coloring pencil. And then same as for the rest of the tutorial, I'm just going to start by testing the size of the brush. Whoops. The size is totally up to you, depending on if you want to have very clear outlines or if you want to have some that are more subtle. I want to have some that are kind of midway between subtle and clear. I want my shape to be very well defined, but I still want this to have a bit of a watercolor feel. And essentially here, you could draw outlines around everything, or you could focus on some elements that are otherwise not defined. So for example here, I could go ahead and just try a few strokes, again, to mimic that kind of fur, so short strokes, to define where the ends, or when the arm ends here, maybe the top of the thigh. Really, you can see it's super subtle, but it does help, you know, the piece look less like a weird blob. So where you add those details and those lines are totally up to you. I do recommend you draw them instead of being, you know, very smooth strokes, especially because we're drawing fur here, drawing them more as sketchy short lines or sketch-like <laughs> short lines. And yeah, you can really draw them wherever you feel like your piece needs to be a little bit cleaner and clearer than what it currently is. And if while you're doing this, you're noticing that your base colors on the color layer are not exactly where you want them to be, so I, I feel like this weird blob doesn't really look like it should be there, just go ahead and use your outlines as a way to just, again, recinch essentially your illustration. And once you're done with those outlines and details, you can always come back, at least I will do, and erase those blobs that are poking out of the colors. So once more, I'm going to stop talking here to let you focus on drawing those outlines and details. I'm going to keep my video going in the background so you can use it as a reference. And once you're done with your outlines, we're going to meet up in the next step, which is going to be cleaning up any kind of blobs that are spilling out and then drawing the facial features. And with that, it is time for the secret password. So if you've watched this final video, please go ahead and let me know in the comments below which type of squirrel you're drawing. So in my case, it's a red squirrel with kind of fluffy ears. Now, if you're a little bit confused with what is the secret password thing, essentially it's a game that we play here on the channel where I hide a secret password for you to find. And that is a few things. The main one being that it gives me a lot of insight into how to edit and pace my videos better, which believe it or not, does help me create better tutorials for you. So again, if you watch this far, just let me know in the comments below which type of squirrel you're drawing, and then we're going to keep going.
And once you're finally done mapping out your outlines, there are a few more things you can do to help them blend in. If you feel like you're happy with the way they are, just keep them like that. But otherwise, if you want them to blend more with the base color, you could always just lower the opacity of that layer a little bit so it blends in with the rest. I want mine to be pretty visible, so I'm going to keep my opacity quite up, 91%. But you could really lower it a lot and still have some of those edges, but without them looking too different from the watercolor. Now you can also, like I mentioned, just come back in with an eraser and clean the colors if there are any that feel not right. And so for that, you would just set your eraser to a basic round brush, like a hard brush, and then you just come around and erase any weird spills. Now once that is done, we're going to draw the facial features, which is going to completely transform the piece because right now it's looking good, it's looking watercolory, but it's looking a little bit creepy because of the face. So the facial features, you could go ahead and draw them on the same layer as your outlines, but I like to keep them separate so that I can easily move them around if needed. So I'm going to create a new layer above the outlines, and I'm going to rename that new layer to facial features. Now the facial features are totally up to you, of course. I'm gonna draw a big round open eye, but you could draw a closed one. And here I'm going to pick a really, really dark version of my brown, so not quite black. I do wanna have a little bit more warmth in, in those facial features. So yeah, just a very, 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 very dark brown, which in the color palette is right here. And here you can pick either the same brush you use for drawing the base color, so a hard brush, but this time probably lifting up the opacity to 80%, 85%, something around that range. But if you do have my watercolor brushes, we're going to switch, instead of using the dark edges watercolor, we're going to pick the thin, intense watercolor. And then really, you can just reactivate your sketch and draw the facial features. So one big round eye. Maybe the other one on the side that we can see a little bit of. And then the nose. Now we haven't sketched a nose, but it's so simple. Essentially, it's kind of like this little bean shape in the front of the face. With a tiny, tiny little V in the middle going towards the bottom of the face. Now if you're not exactly happy with them because they are on a separate layer, you can either use the selection tool to move them around or you can just easily erase anything. Like I feel like my bean nose is too beany, so I'm just going to erase the bottom a little bit to cinch it in. Yeah, let's go with that. Now we're also going to refine these facial features by adding some highlights on them. And at this stage you can just go back and rehide your sketch by the way. And we're going to add two layers of highlights. One is just going to be a brown that is similar to the squirrel, and then one that is a pure white. So sticking on the facial features layer, you're going to go back to the original brown that you use, or the original color that you use, no matter what it was. In my case it was kind of burnt orange right here. And you're also going to go back to whichever brush you use for your outlines and the sketchings or more of a pencil brush. So in my case it was the coloring pencil right here. And then with that brush and with that orange or brown whatever, we're going to draw a crescent moon shape on the lower area or lower left of the eye. And we're also going to draw a slightly curved line across the nose. Then we're going to draw the very intense white highlights. So you can just pick white. I have it here in the color palette. And you're going to draw a big white dot in the front of the eye. And a slightly small, well, quite a bit smaller one 
on the bottom left, overlapping with that brown crescent moon shape. And then the nose, you're just going to draw this kind of little white line on the top, right above your brown, slightly curved line. Now, we are also going to add some whiskers, but we can also, now that we have the facial features, add some extra outlines around them. I am noticing now, though, my eye feels a little bit too high, so I'm going to select that real quick and move it down. It's always a good thing to zoom in and zoom out your piece because you're going to notice some things that either look good when it's small but don't look good when it's big or the inverse. So, yeah, just zoom in and zoom in out as much as you can. But yeah, once you're happy with the placement of your facial features, just going back on the outlines layer with the same brush you use for the outlines. This time going back to the darker brown right here in the color palette. And we're just going to add some very short strokes like this in front of the eye. A few right here on top. Maybe a few below. We're going to extend this little triangle under the nose so it touches the bottom of the face. And we're going to add some more curvy lines, kind of in line with the one in front of the eye, but around the nose area this time, so roughly here. Great. Now from there we can go ahead and add the whiskers. I like to add them on a separate layer because drawing whiskers is kind of tricky. <laughs> so you could draw them on the outlines layer if you wanted to or the facial features layer, but I'm going to create a layer just for them. A new layer, whiskers. And you could stick with brown or you could go back to the same super dark brown you used for the eyes. So right here in the color palette. And then just draw some curved lines for the whiskers. Now what I struggle with is drawing both sides in a way that matches, or at least that is kind of the same height and angle. So that's why I like to draw them on a separate layer because let's say, let's say I like this side, but I feel like this one is just too weird. I can easily just come in, select that side, and then make and match the one that I like. So feel free to pause the video if you need a little bit more time to work on your facial features, details, and stuff like that. And once you're ready, we're going to finish up the piece by adding a very simple background and maybe some splatters as well. Okay, so the background is going to be incredibly easy, but the title of this video is a spring squirrel. And the only reason it's spring is because there are some flowers in the background, so I'm <laughs> going to make sure to draw those flowers so it's actually spring, but also just to make it look like the squirrel is not floating in nothingness. So go ahead and create a new layer. Put it below everything you have, so below the colors, but above the background, of course. And rename that new layer to, let's just go with grass. Now grass is green, so you could just pick whatever green you want. I'm gonna go with a green that is quite yellowy. It's going to complement the squirrel really well. So in the color palette, it is this one right here. And you could stick with the same brush if you're working with free option, the same brush you use for the basic color, so a hard brush with lower opacity, around 40%. If you do have my watercolor bundle though, or my watercolor pack from the big brush bundle, we're going to pick the color shifting blushes right here. Because they have a lot of color variation within them, I really like to use that for backgrounds and big surfaces. So the size of the brush once more is totally up to you. Go ahead and just test it out first. And once you're happy with it, we're just going to draw kind of a flat oval, like a little pancake below the squirrel. Now, if you are working with free brushes at this stage, you probably want to come back in and blend using a smudge tool. If you were working with my brushes, the color shifting blushes is pretty 
smooth as you can see on the edges so I don't feel the need to come back in and blend that in personally but I do feel the need to move my squirrel a little bit in the piece I feel like it's too low and maybe a little bit too much to the left so to move your whole piece super easy you just select all the layers and the way to do that in Procreate is to swipe the layers you want to move towards the right with one finger I don't really need to move the sketch actually and then just use your arrow tool to move stuff around as needed now the last thing we're going to draw is the little flowers, which are going to be super, super simple. You could draw them on the grass layer, but for the same reason I'm drawing the facial features on a separate layer, I'm going to draw them on a separate layer so you can move them around very easily. So just a new layer, still below the squirrel, but above the grass. And that new layer, we're going to rename it to flowers. Now we're going to start by just drawing some very simple stems, still just using the same green, but going back with thin, intense watercolor brush if you're working with my brushes, otherwise just sticking with the hard brush, but a smaller version of it. And we're going to start by drawing the stem of the flower. So in my case, I'm just going to have one long stem here in the front and then a shorter stem here in the back. And I'm going to have them be slightly curvy. Maybe adding a few little blades of grass around the stem just so they don't look too lonely. <laughs> and then figuring out where the flowers are going to be. On this stem, I'm going to have three, so I'm just going to add these secondary curvy stems like this. On the back, I'm only going to have one, but same thing, a little bit of curvy, curvy stem. And my flowers are going to be blue, but you could have really any color of your choice. If you're working with my color palette, the blue I'm going to pick first is this one right here at the top. And we're going to stick with the same brush. We're just going to draw these kind of curvy bells. So you can start with this kind of half oval at the top. And then you can just draw these almost cloud shapes at the bottom. We're just going to repeat that. And then you're going to fill in the left bottom side of each flower. So you're going to leave essentially a little bit of a gap on the top right. And then once you have that, you guessed it, we're just going to come back in and blend those, you know, openings, those highlights, I should say, blend that with the rest of the color, either using the smudge tool or the water blender this time, if you're working with my watercolor pack. So we were using the water drag initially, but we were going to use the water blender here. Making sure it's a small to medium size because these flowers are pretty small, just going over and blending the light in. And like we did for the squirrel, you can also come back in and refine the edges of your shape, this time with a slightly darker blue. So in the color palette, it is this one right here, at least that's the one I'm going to use, as well as a pencil sketching brush. So either the HP pencil, a different pencil brush, or the coloring pencil. And just going over the, mostly the bottom left edges of your flowers. Now here, I'm just going on the same layer as the flower because these are not super important elements. I don't anticipate having to erase anything, so I'm just gonna go you know, right on that layer. 
but you could go ahead and create a separate layer if you don't trust yourself or if you feel like you want to be a little bit more precise. And the very last thing we're going to do here is add some splatters to make the piece look a little bit more like watercolor. And to do that, we're going to create a new layer above everything we have so far, except for the textures and effects. And we're going to rename that new layer to splatters. Now you could totally skip that little step we're about to do if you don't want to, or if you're not able to find it in your software. But I like to apply these splatters as what is called a blending mode so that they react based on the colors underneath. Now blending modes are usually with the opacity slider in your software. In Procreate that means you can still tap on the little N to open your opacity slider. And you're also going to find the list of blending mode right underneath. Now there are two blending modes that I like to use for these kind of splatters. They are at the top of the list usually, multiply or linear burn. I'm gonna go with linear burn, but you can experiment, just scroll to the list and see if there's something you prefer instead of one of those. So I'm gonna go with linear burn here. And I'm just going to pick my original kind of orangey brown. You could pick any of the other colors that are in the piece. And we're going to try to find a splatter brush. Now, the ones that are available in Procreate are not optimal. They are in the spray paint pack that comes with the app. There is either splatter or flicks. Splatter doesn't look like watercolor. It just looks like, like sponge almost. So I'm not gonna go with that. Flicks looks more like watercolor drops, but it's really, really dense. Although right now it looks like blood. I'm really sorry, but yeah, it's really, really super dense. So you would need to use it very, very sparingly. You could also just go with dots of a hard brush and manually position them, making sure you change the size of the brush as you go. But if you do have my big brush bundle from the watercolor pack, we're going to pick the splatter brush, which is well made to look like watercolor, so it should look pretty good. And we're just going to add a few, still very sparingly, mostly on one area of the piece. So we don't want to just add splatters everywhere, that looks crazy. But I'm going to draw mine mostly here around the tail. And you know what? I feel like this bright orange with the blending mode looks like blood. I'm not a fan of that. So I'm gonna go and just make that orange a little bit more gray. It doesn't need to be the exact same color for you, honestly, it doesn't matter. But just making it more gray is probably gonna help. Yeah, it doesn't look quite as much as blood anymore. So just playing around with the size until you find something you like. And then adding a few splatters very sparingly. Now I like these in general, but I do feel like this one is too much, I'm just gonna come in and erase it, not a big deal. Maybe erasing that one as well. And I'm gonna actually add some blue ones around the flower here just to kind of bring the piece in a little bit more together. So going back to my blue and adding a few splatters. And there you go. Now if you enjoyed this video and want more watercolor tutorials, I highly recommend you check out this playlist because I have a bunch more for you. But before you leave, make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the weekly videos I post every Saturday with bonus videos on some Tuesdays. Then click on the link right here and I'll meet you there.